mountains, desert sands, and stormy seas. That's all, all that's standing in between. Where With so many changes at geographic locations, relationships, and cultural norms and rules, the Sikes may especially question who they are. Although they have handled transitions and new experiences well, they may still ask, who am I really? Where do I fit? What is my place in this world? This is Mo. Mo was born in Iran. Since he was four years old, he moved to Burkina Faso, Australia, Vietnam, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Finland, Canada, Portugal, and Holland. I guess the, to summarize when people ask where I'm from, I have a quick thought about either, should I say Iran or Canada? That's the quick thought that goes through my head, but I always say, well, I'm Iranian because I was born there. This is Valentina. Valentina is born in Venezuela. Since she was three years old, she moved to California, Azerbaijan, Pennsylvania, Abu Dhabi, Dallas, Australia, and Florida. Right now, she lives in Abu Dhabi. I'm saving up to take a flight To race me up and take me higher than I've ever been before And when the wings bring me down I cannot tell you what worse home for me. I can tell you Venezuela. But, like I said, when I go to Venezuela, I feel like I'm an expat because I didn't grow up there. I didn't, especially during my teenage years, I didn't, like, experience all the things. Like you start learning how to drive in Venezuela or um, going out with boys or going out clubbing in Venezuela. I didn't do any of that. This is Noah. Her dad is Dutch. Her mom is Israeli. She's born in Switzerland, grew up in Israel, and currently she lives in Holland. It's now a bit less, but when I just moved, I still felt very um, Israeli. And I still tried to be Dutch because I wanted to fit in. Only about two years in, I really didn't want to become one of them. I wanted to become me, and I didn't know who me was anymore. So I felt myself, I, I felt not Dutch enough to be Dutch, and not Israeli enough to be Israeli. So when moving to international school, that actually made it a bit better because it's like I found a middle ground. Being international, it felt as if now I can also blend in into the Dutch culture if I want to, and I can blend into the Israeli culture, but I am not either. I am international. Because I'm an environmental microbiologist here in the Netherlands, um, uh, one of the very good labs in my field is at the, in the Radboud University. So at a time I wanted to move because I had been in Canada for such a long time that I felt like I had to move somewhere. And the lab that I wanted to pick was the lab that's here, so that was my first choice. And I thought if I don't get in then I'll look into other labs in other countries. So this is what we call the reactor lab. And in most environmental microbiology labs that you go into, they might have two, maybe three of these. But here at this university, we have spot for about 76 of them. And that's very rare. So in each vessel that you see here are either pure or non-pure cultures of bacteria that are being fed with mediums. And basically, you grow them and then you study the physiology um, their genomics, all sorts of different things. Um, and this is the latest addition to uh, our reactor lab section. As you can see, it's still very new, tidy, and clean. <laughs> to get my diploma, I need to do um, CAS, which is 200 hours of either spending it on something crea creativity, activity, and service. So my big project was uh, making the ice ski be possible, which is the first ISB ski trip. 
ice kibi. So I got all the permits and uh, it went forth. If people walk around and see me and like, ask me about it, I can tell all about my project. This, this is my little book where I learned Russian. I learned some, some Russian for fun. Like these are a few terms I learned from first. And this is the uh, alphabet. I've also volunteered at uh, No Violence Against Women. It's a uh, it's a foundation that builds uh, shelters for women who are uh, living with violence at home and want to run away until they find a new home and work and jobs. And, what many, and many of them bring their kids with them, so then I was at the daycare after school taking care of them. If you can see, if you walk around, there are many people with posters of what they do and like free food and uh, whatever. Hey, what is going on? Okay, you know, like you eat it like yes. pizza. So you take yeah. the pizza. Yeah, After you just make the falafel, like you have to look it up from chickpeas then, and like all the spices. Then you fry them. And then you have basically balls of falafel. And these balls of falafel, you first you like put a sauce like uh, hummus or tahini yeah. or both. And then you put like in, then you put in the salad and stuff, and then you put in three balls. Okay, thank you. We have like a wonderful meal. Yeah. yeah, so she did a bike ride to encourage people to ride their bikes instead of to go by car, because cars obviously pollute the earth. And then these are campaigns for global warming to stop like pollution. And yeah, this is the video. In Russian, English. The English we just wrote yesterday it's like not perfect. It's okay. It's okay. Which one? The what was it? Who? Vche Go Govo Govorim. Govorim? Or Uine. We all talk about war. <laughs> war. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Developing a sense of identity is not a task limited to TCKs. It is important for all of us. Identity is our sense of who we are and guides our interests and our life choices. A TCK feels most at home when they are with people that have had similar experiences. I felt really attached with Australia because there were people from many parts of the world who were experiencing the same thing that I was experiencing. That made it easier for me. You know, it was not strange to live in a house with different nationalities, everybody, I don't know, was facing the same things and it, it was fun. If I immediately meet someone who is a third culture kid, we are going to immediately get along very well. Obviously everybody's different, they're gonna have different personalities and beliefs and stuff, but how you look at things and how you look at um, how you look at other people and how you treat them and your way of thinking, it's similar if you've been through that circumstance. When you move around, you sort of see like a different point of view. A same situation that occurs, any situation that you can think of, uh, for me, who's moved, I think differently towards it than somebody who's stayed in the same place. I've noticed that even with my friends in Canada, because of course, most of my friends in Canada had lived in Canada their whole lives. And um, when, a, let's say, a, a problem occurs between two people or a conflict of some sort, just the way we act about it is completely different. And I don't know why. I, I don't know if that's a personality thing, but I've noticed it with people that haven't traveled so much. Um, they always act differently than I do. And other people that also have traveled, they act similar to I do. Growing up among several cultures bring both benefits and challenges for TCKs. One benefit of the TCK lifestyle is sensitivity to culture and cultural adaptability. They are able to adapt quickly to different situations. Change is one of the only constants in the lives of TCKs, 
and they learn how to adjust to change. Most CCKs are able to think on their feet. They are adaptable and gave them compassion for other cultures, languages and people. You do get used to meeting other cultures and it gets easier for yeah. you to communicate and understand and make new friends. It's, it's much Or, it or even have easier. connections. Yeah, about certain things because you can always connect certain things, and you can so. adapt. Yeah, like, like for instance, when we when I went to Baku, it was really hard for me to adapt to the Muslim culture, but you had to learn because otherwise you have no friends. The adaptation period becomes shorter the more you do it. I've noticed that, um, particularly in my job. You know, last year when they told us we're gonna, I mean, in my job they told me you're gonna go to the states for a week, I'm like, yeah, I have no problem going to the States for a week, and then it ended up being one more week, one more week, up to f three, four months. I didn't mind it as much as my other colleagues did, and they were like, oh, we're stopping alive, I have a life in Abu Dhabi and stuff, and for me, it was like, it's normal, and I adapted to, to the States very quickly. My, um strong points when I apply for like in my CV is that I'm highly adaptive and you learn to be that way since childhood if you move around. I experienced a lot of prejudices that other people were uh, that other people had for other cultures and it is easier for me to just identify with different cultures and understand the world better. The languages are definitely a benefit. I mean, I can go out here in the street and just speak to a person and I have a chance with connecting with him and in Dutch and I can do the same in Israel. And if I'm not in either of those, I can just speak in English, which is now currently my best language, but it can always change depending on the environment I am. Well, until a few years ago, we had this rule that uh, only, um, you know, Every parent has one language. To me, they have to speak Hebrew, and I speak only Hebrew to them and to their dad in Dutch. But when they grew up and they became very fluent in English, my husband and I, we always spoke English between us since we've met. So then English took over more and more as the common language. But it's only if we speak, like, if we will speak all three together, it will never be in English. No, it will, it will always, always be Hebrew. Hebrew. But if uh, our dad is here, then we'll speak English probably. If it's a if or, it's a really or, discussion uh, yeah, topic. Yeah. Or if you started with Dutch, you would go on with Dutch, and I will just listen. These okay. yeah. have an ability to make friends quickly, and consequently will likely have connections all over the world. They develop strong cross-culture skills and are comfortable among diverse people. But for most of them, it is and will always be a hard job to say goodbye. <laughs> Making friends is something that you become good at because you have to. You have a short period of time, so you know that you have to fit in quickly, so you adapt quickly to how they, they are and um, try to fit in the culture, I guess. I, I never get upset about being a third culture kid until I have to say goodbye. I don't know. Like for me, goodbye it doesn't like, get it doesn't get used. I, it doesn't get any easier for me to say goodbye. So. For me, it is. It's like, okay, goodbye. Like right now. I know what's gonna happen. I'm in a relationship, he's gonna leave, I'm gonna be sad. We're both gonna be in touch for like two months, three months. Yeah. It's gonna be very difficult. We're gonna be dreaming that we're gonna meet for vacation and then eventually yes. you have an argument and it ends. Yeah. And then it sucks. And then you meet another relationship and the same shit happens. <laughs> so it gets, yeah. it gets annoying yeah, guess after so. several times and no matter how long, yeah. How many times you do it, it's still difficult to say.
easier with Facebook and Skype and things like that. But I'm not that old, but back when I was in like grade one, you move away and you don't even have email. So you lost touch, uh, contact completely. The earliest friends that I've kept are since high school. And that's a funny story because um, even later on we found each other on Facebook. It wasn't even like when I left, we kept on contact all the time. It was afterwards. Yes, that's it, the it, only thing that's the, getting involved. The, the, the period, the time period for you to recover from that, it gets easier, that's for sure. In order for, I mean, I get, now I get sad the time that I say goodbye, maybe the next day and that's it. Yeah. Before, it would be much longer than that. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's always going to be sad to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. When I say goodbye to everybody in Australia, for me, it was, it was really sad. And it took me, like, I think it was the, the, one of the saddest moments. Oh, oh, this is the best day of my life! <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a pleasure spending my this fun. month with you guys. I Don't start with the one I cry. This is a case I used to unexpected circumstances and focus more on the present than on the future. When uncertain of whom they are, they may struggle with decisions and relationships. Commitment to an idea, a value, a behavior, or even a person becomes a tricky task. My, my life has been very unpredictable with regards to what I end up doing. Like uh, if you ask me eight months ago, what are you going to be doing in eight months? I would not say my PhD in Holland. That's not something that would even come close to my mind. So I believe that I have uh, sort of uh, learned to just take any uh, the opportunity that um, at the moment, like right at that moment that it presents itself, it's not necessarily something I think like five years in advance. Even now, although I'm thinking like what to do in, after I'm finished in four years, it's not, I don't plan st strictly that this has to happen in this way. I'm much more open to what presents itself. Well, I'm sure when I was in Caracas, I never imagined that my dad was going to tell us we're going to move to a server gym in the middle of the school year, so I'm used to unexpected circumstances and I would rather not take risks in terms of commitments. Do you take commitments? I don't think, I don't even commit to relationships. You don't even know what you're going to do after you graduate, I'm sure. No. It's the same thing. I don't know. I mean, people ask, and you give them an idea, what, but uh, anything. At this point, it's just anything. You take what you get, what you can have, that's it. Relationship, I, I'm in a relationship now, he's very happy, he, he I mean, he doesn't know, he, he can stay there, he's Canadian, he can stay there, I love, but I can't, if shit doesn't work out, I have to come back here, he doesn't understand that. Many of them see themselves traveling and never really settle down. They feel compelled to utilize their skills and characteristics that were developed through their experience for the benefit of others. I don't want to be a stranger every time, so I think when, when I'm older I will go back. I just want to build my life there. I always thought, well, maybe when I get married and I have my family, I will just stay in, in, in one place and live my life and grow old. But I don't know if I want that. You know, I don't know if... I would like my kids to also see the world and travel and 
get the opportunities that I had, it makes it better for your career, I think, because you're always gonna be interacting, especially right now, I mean, everything is global. I, I always said I, I would like to get the job that would allow me to move, and maybe that's because my dad had a job that allowed him to move. And every time we moved to a country, say Portugal or Canada or Finland, I thought, oh, I could settle down here. But I, I've said that sentence about more than just one country. So once you say it about more than just one country, even Holland, even the Netherlands, I've said, oh, I can settle down here. Uh, then it becomes really difficult. Like, oh, which one do I really mean it? Which one I don't really mean it? I would say I would not change anything. Because all the opportunities that I've had till now, I mean, they're, they're very great. I mean, I would never change that for, for anything else. Um, if I would have stayed in Caracas all my life, I um, definitely wouldn't have gone to Australia or travel the world or um, have the different relationships that I had and I wouldn't be the same person that I am today. Same in my career, I wouldn't have the same opportunities. So it's worth it. I mean, at some point it's worth it because you get to meet more people in different cultures and live different experiences than if I would be in the same place all my life. I don't think I would like it. I sent letters but they took a while And you called but always at the worst of times Never know who to put as my emergency contact. <laughs> It's like, if anything happens to me in Canada, who are they gonna call? I don't know. My I boyfriend, I guess job. now, but I mean, we haven't even been dating for a year. It's not like yeah, I can put him with your roommate. That's what I used to do. Yeah, okay, your roommate, but I'm not really that close to my roommates either. And like, my family's like a whole 12 hours away, like, you know, like a whole freaking 24 hour plane ride. Like, how. Who the hell do you put as your emergency call that? So I guess it's time to say that I to take a So they tell me that you have to make a contract for a year. Or you can you know get a contract for not get a contract but you pay every month. And so I thought for a year. Am I gonna be here for a year? Really going to commit for a year? I mean, I really don't think so. 